All right, everybody. Uh, can everybody hear me? Can you hear me, Eckert? Yes. 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 Okay. Good morning, all. This is uh, the 28th of October, and we are now starting our Naples Mac user group meeting. Uh, we welcome all of our members from all around the world and throughout the USA and Canada. That should cover everybody, I would hope, unless we have anybody from the moon or Mars. Uh, I'll make sure we cover them next time. Uh, just want to remind you that our meetings are every week at this time until the 30th of June. You must be a member of Naples Mug to uh, zoom into our meetings. And I want to again congratulate all of our uh, new members which took advantage of our special membership promotion, uh, which ends November the 1st. And we certainly uh, hope, I think we have uh, uh, about 60% of those that uh, join who have paid their dues. And we hope the rest of you are planning to do the same thing. We want you to uh, continue to be members and we've enjoyed having you. We've announced the uh, classes uh, for 2021. And I just want to remind you again that registration starts November 1st. Uh, newsflash, newsflash, end of Yahoo groups. As of December the 15th, our Yahoo discussion group will cease to exist. But never fear when Naples mug is here, we, our new member and board member, Mike Kowadzniak from Suffolk, England, is leading a committee to replace Yahoo with um, Groups IO. You'll be uh, hearing a lot more about it from uh, Mike, and um, and I think you'll be very excited when you see the program. And we're looking forward to the change. Yahoo has taken away a lot of the benefits over the years. And uh, from what we hear uh, from other Mac user groups, they're thrilled with Groups IO. The November 4th meeting, which is uh, next week, it will be our uh, normal Q&A for Apple devices. And we'll be, uh, and Cheetah will be running that meeting. The meeting after that on November the 11th uh, will be Mitch Breyer. And that will be a um, iOS meeting for the iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch. That will be primarily a Q&A meeting. Uh, but I think Mitch has got a few ideas up his sleeve. So you'll be hearing uh, from me and Mitch uh, in the notes I send out. Uh, what those issues, what those things are. So we uh, welcome Mitch on the 11th. Today's meeting uh, is is a meeting that we did for the first time last year. We thought it would be uh, uh, good to um, inform our members about our classes prior to when they start um, the class content. Um, this year we're going to be zooming all of our classes. So there's going to be some changes in that area. We do expect to have a record turnout because we've had record turnouts to our meetings. And we assume that using Zoom for our classes, uh, that the experience um, with Zoom seems to be a better audio and video experience. And we're looking forward to uh, having record breaking class enrollments. Uh, today, Jeff and Eckert We'll be uh, running the meeting and talking about everything that relates to these classes. That's it for me for at the moment. Okay, so um, I'm Jeff Bohr. I'll start explaining a little bit of what we're gonna be doing this season uh, starting in January. So let me share the screen here. So in 2021, uh, our class schedule, as George mentioned, will be 
Zoom only classes. So whereas before we were, uh, you know, meeting at the Naples Conference Center at 930, that's going to change a little this year. And we will be meeting at 10 o'clock Eastern time. And the meetings will last, uh, the classes will last about two and a half hours with a 15 minute break in the middle. So the class dates are as listed here and they will all be held via Zoom. So January 9th, 16th, 23rd and 30th, February 6th, 13th, 20th and 27th, and March 6th and 13th. So we have 10 total classes available. Uh, and as Eric mentioned, you'll be able to sign up for those starting November 1st. And I'm gonna review now the instructors and the topics for those classes so that you can decide which or all that you may like to attend. So the first class on January 9th will be very relevant to what we're all dealing with now. And it will be titled uh, Using Zoom and FaceTime in the COVID-19 Era. So we've all been uh, dealing with this for uh, several months now. It seems like a couple of years already. But uh, Rosemary Orchard, who's an Apple guru and has written many books and appeared on many podcasts, is going to be the instructor for that. And she's going to talk about how to use these different technologies to be able to use uh, specifically Zoom and FaceTime communicating with member friends and maybe business associates. So that'll be a great class that will give you more of the nuances and the, the kind of the pro tips for using Zoom and FaceTime. If you were a little hesitant about exploring them a little deeper, Rosemary will cover all of that. So the next class on January 16th, I'll be doing um, Mac OS 11, which is entitled Big Sur. So that's the successor to Catalina, which will probably be out in a, a week or two, hopefully, uh, according to all the, the news that's out there. So that's an imminent release. And uh, as usual, you may not want to upgrade to Big Sur if you're not sure about it. And if you wanna wait until this class in January, after it's been out for a few months, if anything gets updated between now and the time the class starts, I'll update my presentation so that you won't miss out on the latest on Big Sur. But this is the first operating system that's gone from a 10 point something since Mac OS 10 debuted. So we've always been used to 10.11, 10.12, 10.13, 10.14. Catalina was 10.15. Mac OS Big Sur is a big enough change that it jumps to 11. So you'll, you'll notice that uh, when you go to this class, if you see anything online about it, the interface has changed quite a bit. They've totally rede redesigned the interface of the, the, the operating system. So you'll notice that all the buttons look different, the menus look different. So that's one of the biggest things is that the window that you see on your Mac changes quite a bit. It's still intuitive because Apple never changes the whole operating system but the buttons look a little different. Some of the menus have been moved around. So there are a lot of changes in Big Sur. Also with Safari, Messaging, Maps, uh, HomeKit, and with some of the new devices that have just been introduced, like the uh, HomePod Mini, HomeKit will even be more important with Big Sur if you have multiple devices, with the intercom feature and such. So we'll cover all that on January 16th in the Big Sur overview. On January 23rd, I'll be leading another class, which is, uh, seems to be pretty popular, but I'm gonna cover tips and tricks to make your Mac easier to use. So we all know some keyboard shortcuts for copy and paste and print possibly, but there are a lot more things that you can do on your Mac that Windows computer users have to buy a third-party app for. Like printing to a PDF is an example that probably a lot of people use, but things like that, you cannot do easily on a Windows computer without buying Acrobat Pro or a similar function. So I'm going to talk about a lot of the little tips and tricks and shortcuts, and also maybe some apps that will help you maximize the use of your Mac, as well as be a time saver. Because the more shortcuts you can use, the less time you'll spend at the keyboard, and you'll have time to enjoy life or go on a cruise or something, if that's ever possible again. 
on January 30th, iOS 14 for iPhone. Uh, we have two classes this year and last year because if you noticed about two years ago, it used to be just iOS for the iPad and the iPhone. Now they have an iPad OS and an iOS for the iPhone. So the first of the two classes Maryland will be doing is on iOS 14, which is the most recent release for the iPhone. And she'll cover many of the new updated features, including the widgets and the app library, which you may have noticed if you've, if you've installed iOS 14 and you're looking around your screens. Uh, user interfaces, Translate, which is a new app built into iOS 14 and the re recent release of Safari. Uh, Translate search messages, app clips, camera health. So she'll cover everything that's new for your phone with the new iOS release. And that'll be on January 30th, again at 10 a.m. On February 6th, she'll have the accompanying class, iOS 14 for iPad. So she'll cover the iPad iOS, the iPad OS, and that will feature things like scribble and notes and sidebars, things that you can't do with the phone because a lot of them depend on the graphics input features that are available on the iPad that aren't available on the phone. A lot of them would use the Apple Pencil or your finger. So there's a lot of things, differences, if you have an iPad and you have an iPhone, and you've noticed some things that are on your phone are not on your iPad. Well, this is where Maryland's gonna break down what new features are available on each device that you may use. So the iPad uh, has a lot different features, but not all the same as the iPhone. So if, you're, if you have an iPad and an iPhone and you wanna find out about, about iOS 14 and what's available for you with those operating systems for the devices, both of these classes will be integral because some of it overlaps, but a lot of it is unique to the device. On February 13th, entertainment and streaming, uh, Jim Corsica will be the instructor for that. And if you've noticed, uh, especially since March or so, you've probably gotten a lot of more familiar with Netflix and Amazon TV and the different apps. If you're uh, kind of confining yourself and, and staying safe and staying home and uh, Besides books, this is what people are doing. So if you're not reading a book, you might be enjoying a streaming service. Jim's going to cover all the different streaming services. How to transfer music if you have CDs laying around. How to get those into your iTunes library. How to download audiobooks. How to buy audiobooks. How to use Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. He'll talk about podcasts and he'll talk about new streaming services and hardware. So depending on uh, what Apple may release uh, for the Apple TV in the ending days, they've done some software updates uh, kind of alongside the iOS 14 updates for the Apple TV and Jim will cover all that. So if you have any questions about entertainment and what streaming is or how it works or what you can do with it, this is a great class and Jim is well qualified uh, because he uses all this stuff. So he knows the ins and outs of it. On February 20th, we will have a class on the Photos app. So this is the Photos app for Mac OS Big Sur. So there've been a lot of changes in photos since it transitioned from iPhoto a few years ago that have evolved and given you more editing features. The Big Sur release of I, the Photos app has got a lot of different stuff in it available for editing and exporting and using external editors. So he's gonna really talk about how to use that. In the second part of the class, he'll talk about how the Photos app on the devices, specifically the iPhone and iPad has changed. So he'll concentrate on the photos on the computer. So on the Big Sur version of photos, and then he'll also review iOS and iPad OS changes that have occurred with the evolution of the software on those devices. And Dan Wasing uh, is the producer and uh, owner of Noteboom Productions. So if you've seen any of his tutorial videos that can, you can subscribe to, uh, he's got great qualifications and he'll be he'll give a great presentation on photos. And that is on February 20th at 10 a.m. On February 27th, 
Marilyn will be back for a class on Apple Watch OS 7. So this is the most recent release of the OS for the watch. It has a lot more complications. It has a integrated sleep tracking function now. I don't know any, I, personally, I don't get any benefit of the sleep tracking. I still have a six and a 10 year old at home. So one of them is always crawling into bed. So none of these sleep trackers ever work and I'm always up at two in the morning for a half hour dealing with that. So but for someone that gets a good sleep, that, that sleep tracking with the Apple Watch will probably be a, a good tool. But when you have kids in the house, I found that none of the sleep trackers work because you don't sleep well anyway. So again, uh, custom watch faces. You can share watch faces now. So she's gonna cover that. So if you have a watch face that you like, you can actually send it in a message to a buddy or someone and they can have the same watch face you have. So that's something you can do now that you could not do before. She'll cover that. Different shortcuts. It'll keep track of how much you wash your hands. So if you don't wash your hands for 15 seconds, it'll ask you what's wrong with you. And why didn't you, or 20 seconds, why didn't you wash your hands for 20 seconds? And it will remind you to wash your hands when you get home, if you get out. So that's a new health conscious uh, trip to it, trip to it. Uh, Siri Translate will also work on that. They've improved workouts and cycling and also health updates and the new uh, oxygen monitor that's available in the new iWatch 6, she'll review that. So all the different health things, some of them which are FDA approved, uh, like the ECG function is FDA approved, but the oxygen, the blood oxygen level hasn't been FDA approved. FDA approved yet, from, but from what people have told me and what I've read, if you go and get a regular little reader on your finger and compare it to what's on the watch, they're usually very close. So I think that's only a matter of time before that gets official FDA approval. But these tools are in a device you can wear on your wrist that you wouldn't even thought possible 10 or 15 years ago, maybe eight years ago, that you could do all this. On March 6th, Joel Kissel, who's the new owner of Take Control Books, he's written several books that are on uh, the Take Control series, and he's going to talk about iCloud. So what does iCloud syncing mean? What syncs with iCloud? What does not sync with iCloud? What settings do you need to have turned on? How does iCloud drive work? What are the benefits, the pros and the cons? He's going to give you a good mix of what's available in iCloud and also iCloud family sharing, which has been enhanced with some of the new features that Apple's coming out with for packages, bundles for sharing. Some of that is tied in with iCloud. So Joe Kissel, who's a, a great speaker and, and author, I think he's waking up, I think he's in California, so he's gonna get up early to do this presentation, but he's, he's always alert and, and a, good, a good show. Now on March 13th, I'll be doing the final class on security and protection. So what you've noticed is, and especially uh, I think more so now that we're all at home or we're, we're staying in, there's more attempts to separate you from your money or sanity than there have ever been before. Um, I, I get three or four calls a week about a, a pop-up ad or something that's taken over a screen. Uh, this week, there's been a lot of uh, HP printer issues because uh, Catalina released an update that that gave you some HP printer errors. So I'll, I'll tell you what's a real scam and what, what is not a scam. I'll talk about uh, how they work, how the people that uh, come up with this orchestrate them, how to identify whether an email is real or not. Because a lot of times you'll notice that you'll get an email from a friend, but it has some weird request to go to CVS and buy some gift cards because they're stuck somewhere. Well, if you hover over the address, you'll often find that it is not actually your friend. They just got a hold of an address book and they're masking the identity. So I'll show you how to identify who the true sender of an email is, how to safely unsubscribe and block emails. Apple in Catalina and in Big Sur has got a lot of uh, new tools in mail that I'll cover here and in the Big Sur class for identifying and blocking senders. And I'll also talk about how to uh, create and manage good passwords using the 1Password program, uh, creating new email addresses, how to identify and avoid website pop-ups. And so basically it, it'll help you, keep you a little safer from all the different threats 
that are happening now from outside sources. And a lot of them are real threats that you should be aware of and, and deal with, but a lot of them are just fluff. And if you, if you remove a program that got downloaded, uh, one of the big things to remember is that, you know, Adobe Flash has been retired and probably quite a few of you have seen uh, Adobe Flash uninstall prompts come up on your computer. So Adobe is actively uninstalling Flash. But for so many years, people did Flash updates just out of muscle memory because there were so many Flash updates. That's how these surreptitious programs would get onto your machine. And people say, well, I didn't download Mac Ad Keeper. Well, it, it came disguised as Adobe Flash. So that's what they call a Trojan horse where it looks like Adobe Flash, but when you install it, it's actually a, a rogue program. So th those type of programs will probably be less prevalent now that Adobe Flash is being officially retired at the end of the year. So again, the class dates and times, they'll be held from 10 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. There'll be a 15 minute break so you can stretch your legs, use the restroom, get a drink of water, whatever, probably around 11.15, we're going to try to get all the about halfway point. There will be a break. So, but if any time, of course, it's a Zoom meeting. So, you need to leave for a moment. You can you can do that. So, th those are the dates again: January the 9th, the 16th, 23rd, and 30th. February 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th. And two days in March: March 6th and 13th. So, those will be the uh, that's the class schedule for the 2021 and mug season. Jeff, Becker, uh, we over have a, to you. Jeff, oh, yes. we, have a, we have a question from Jim Corsica. Jim, can you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Jeff, is there a limit yes, to class size? No, there's. Uh, I don't think there's any limit now that we've got a pro Zoom program. So I think Ecker could answer that, but I think it's several hundred people could attend. And if we go over 100, we'll, uh, we'll deal with it. We'll deal okay. with it. There won't there won't be an echo to my right. And what I'm saying, there won't be a limit to the class. We had a security case that I was handling just this very uh, very minute. Somebody tried to sign in with the name just Joe, and you we need to understand we cannot accept anyone with the name Joe. That could be a potential uh, Zoom bomber. So I removed them, and I sorry I uh, I have to do that simultaneously by uh, being the host and overlooking our show but I also have to look out for security issues. So was, was the question, uh, can we have more than 100 members or what? what, uh, what Is there any know? limit to the amount of members we can have in a class? And I said, no, and I just was checking with you. No, I think we can have more than 100, but it, uh, it would require an additional fee that we would pay to Zoom. And I think the more people attend our meetings, the more potential problems might happen with regard to bandwidth. And uh, and uh, and that's why uh, Zoom has provide has to has to provide more bandwidth if there are more than 100 participants, and that costs more money. On the other hand, I will later say in my presentation that we will request our participants to all shut down their videos and also their audios unless they have an interactive question uh, to to uh, improve on the quality of the of the overall Zoom presentation. Thank you. Yeah, and we okay, would know that be, we would know that pretty much before the meeting, so uh, and we could deal with it. Any other questions about the class schedule or topics? Oh, uh, you didn't um, mention that it. Um, well, I guess Eckert's going to mention if you purchase all ten classes. You only have to pay for nine. All right, Mitch, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes. Uh, how much are the classes this year? And is there a period of time if I've registered that I can back out or change to a different class if I've already paid? I will, I will answer to that, Mitch, in my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions Anything about, about class? Yeah, any questions on the class material or any questions of Jeff? 
why don't I uh, start with my presentation and uh, maybe uh, my presentation will answer some of those uh, questions that you might still uh, be concerned about. And after my presentation, we have ample time, I believe today to ask additional questions. So hopefully we have the answers. Eckerd, before you start, this is Marilyn. Um, I'd like to just mention uh, about the um, iPad and iPhone classes. Um, there are so many new updates in the iPhone classes um, that um, will also be relevant to the iPad classes. And I would recommend, and I may not be able to cover all of those again in the iPad classes. So I'm recommending that if you are planning to attend the iPad class, that you also attend the iPhone class so you can <clears throat> be sure to get all the updates in, in both devices. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Okay then, I believe uh, it's my time. Uh, and uh, first of all, I would like to say that I'm looking forward to a great spring uh, program for Naples Mug. I believe uh, we will have the best class program ever. Uh, we will have outstanding audio uh, and video quality. Uh, we will uh, have more interaction. One problem in the past when we had physical meetings, uh, let me see now, was Uh, we see you, George. Are you okay? I'm, I just want to see whether I can put the spotlight on me. I, can, I don't think I can, being the host. In any event, uh, in the past, when we had physical meetings, uh, people asked questions, but because the uh, conference rooms were pretty large, uh, it was frequently impossible to understand the question that was asked. And uh, our presenters have, of course, uh, tried to repeat the question so that everybody would understand them, but uh, that didn't always happen. So I always also believe that the quality of our future class programs will be substantially enhanced because uh, the questions that people ask will be understood by everyone. So interaction, which is so important for classes, uh, will be there and will be there in a prominent way. Uh, all Zoom meetings uh, this spring will be between 10 and 12.30, 10 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. Uh, there will be a, a brief in, in intermission for about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, <clears throat> we will provide our participants with class notes in advance, just a few days prior to each, each class. We will also uh, record these classes but uh, in order to protect uh, the intellectual property that is uh, part of, uh, of these classes, we will make these recordings uh, available only to the actual class participants. So we will not post these classes publicly on our website. Okay, uh, I would like now to go to the next step and actually show you how to register uh, for our class program. I will enter share screen and uh, we'll go to our website. And uh, on our website, you will find on the front page class registration. What you need to do uh, if you want to uh, start, if you want to register for classes beginning November 1st, just go to this website and click on class registration, which I'm doing now. And it uh, will also give you instructions uh, when you get to the next page, how to proceed. And I will show you what you need to do. I click on class registration again and I will be taken to this page, which is unfortunately so confusing to many of our members because people believe they have to now enter their an account name and a password. And no, 
you don't you simply have to type in the word classes which i'm doing now no password and then sign in so i repeat where it says account name just type in the word classes no password and sign in now you're taking uh to to a page uh where you the next step would be to actually enter your name if you are a member you enter your name up here if you're not not a member you need to enter your first and last name further down below on that page i will enter my name here for illustration purposes and enter. And you find that there are three people with my name. That's my wife's uh, name, my, my myself. And then the third one, Eckhart, non-member. Uh, I am on our database uh, twice as a regular member and also my capacity as registrar. And because as registrar, I'm not entitled to vote. It says non-member. So uh, I want to uh, register now for classes as Eckhart Getty, the member. So I click on my name and I'm taking to the next page. And this will happen to all of you if you follow uh, the same procedure. <clears throat> now I find here my name, I find the class fee, I'm a member, uh, and I, I show my email address, my phone number. And now I can decide uh, which classes I want to uh, participate in. And if I, if I click one, for example, immediately it shows down below one class registered in the fee. And so, and if I would sign up for more classes, logically uh, you will find uh, the results down below five classes registered 75. Now, if I sign up for nine classes, you st I still pay $135 for nine classes. But if I decide to sign up for all 10 classes, I get a discount of, uh, of uh, one class. So I'm actually only paying 135. So it is an advantage if you sign up for all classes because you can attend one class for free. Incidentally, if you decide initially to only sign up for a few classes and later on you decide to uh, register for more and eventually it turns out that you have registered for our classes, but in, in several different steps, you will still given, be given the discount of $15. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, now that I have checked the classes that I want to uh, sign up for, I need to, uh, need to look at how to pay. And uh, here it says, please enter pay, uh, payer information. In my case, I would be the, uh, uh, the attendee would be the payer, but if somebody else, <clears throat> let's say my wife wants to make me a present, so she does the registration unbeknownst to me, and she wants to pay for it, then she would have to add it here, first name, last name, and email, and the uh, subsequent invoice would be sent to her, so she would have to make the payment. But normally that's not the case. I think normally <clears throat> the people who sign up for classes will also pay for them. <clears throat> If I then further on down click here to pay, what will happen? Is that the, the person who registers will receive uh, will receive a, a PayPal invoice. And uh, I think you're familiar with these PayPal invoices as we also have structured our membership uh, payments uh, the same way. You receive an invoice from PayPal, but you don't have to have a PayPal account and you don't have to pay with PayPal. With PayPal. Uh, payment will be accepted uh, with any, any credit card. Now we go to the next step. Once you have uh, successfully registered, you will receive a, uh, a confirmation letter. So this confirmation letter will have all the information that you need the classes you've signed up for that you've paid uh, and so, several other recommendations uh, that I think will be useful. Uh, I would like to say that uh, a few uh, days before each class, maybe a week before each class, we will send each participant a, a, a reminder letter. And then three days before each class, we will send out another message. And that's very important because that, that message will 
contain two important links. One link is to the class notes uh, that we suggest you download and have them present for the class itself. And the other link is, uh, is the link to join our Zoom meeting. Uh, we will have for each class, we will have a, a different meeting ID and uh, that meeting ID is, is contained in that particular message. And we will also use a passcode. We'll probably use the same uh, passcode that we normally use in Naples Mark NMUG. Uh, we would uh, also suggest that when, it, when uh, uh, on the day of the class itself, although it starts at 10 o'clock, it would be good if you would sign in uh, some uh, several minutes before. I would suggest that you begin to to register or, or join the meeting, to join the meeting about 9:45, a quarter to 10, even a few minutes early. I will, as as host of these classes, I will start the meetings at 9:30, so you can slowly uh, uh, move in, join, and have the time for uh, some chats uh, among members and guests. Uh, during the class itself, my recommendation is to turn off both video and audio because that will improve uh, on the quality of the Zoom presentation overall. We'll also have a moderator at, in each class and the, the uh, function of the moderator is to really uh, manage uh, interaction, manage questions, mention, uh, manages comments, and uh, we use two vehicles. We will use two vehicles for these uh, for this interaction. We'll use the chat room, and we will also use the ability for uh, participants to raise their hands. Uh, one other issue that I think is important: people and and uh, Mitch Bryas already asked that question. Uh, what if you have misplaced this particular confirmation letter? and you have forgotten exactly which classes you have signed up for. So there is a way uh, for you uh, to do that. And in fact, this confirmation letter towards the end, it gives you a link to that particular page, how to, uh, how to check on your registration. Uh, you may also, if you, if you forget, if you have misplaced this letter, you probably won't be able to find this particular link that is uh, included in this letter. So I will show you a different way, an easy way, how to uh, check on your uh, on your existing re uh, uh, registrations. And in order to do that, I will go again to our Naples web uh, Naples Mark website, and I will go into uh, to registrations again, class registrations. I will click on that. I click on class registration again. And now instead of write, ty typing in classes, I would type an update. And sign in. Now, uh, George, with your permission, may I, enter, may I show uh, your, the registrations you have already made? With that yes. Point? Okay, yes. I enter yes. George's last name and I also enter his membership number, which I record. And now here uh, you see class registrations and you can slide down the list. And that's the way to verify for each member and uh, actually also for a guest because a guest would also receive a, a membership, a provisional membership number. That's the way how you can check uh, on uh, the registrations you have made. I think uh, this concludes uh, my presentation. And uh, I think both Jeff and I are ready to answer any additional questions. Thank you. I have a question, Eckert. Yes. With the last uh, exercise you just did, you entered George, George's member number. Uh, if Let's say I don't remember what my member number is. Is that is there some place that I can find that, or do I send you an email to ask for it? How do I? I I, I I'm I've been un, unorganized. I don't remember my member number. So what do I do? I think the easiest way is to just send me a brief note, 
And I can very quickly answer that question. I need to go into FileMaker Pro into our database to find that number. I don't have any other list to, to, to find that number, but that's, that's the easiest way to do. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Mitch, unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Yes, uh, that was excellent, Eckert. Um, again, I wanted to ask if I've registered for a particular class, let's say the iPhone, um, and I, for whatever reason, can't attend or don't want to attend that, and I want to change it to a different class and I've already paid, is that something that you can do within a, in a certain time frame? I would say this, if you want to exchange classes, if you want to attend, rather than the first one, you want to attend the third one, and you already paid for the first one, the easiest way to do that is to send me a brief note, and I will do that. I can go into the system and make those uh, modifications. If, okay. however, you want to uh, decide that you cannot uh, come to the class at all, uh, then we have established a policy uh, in the past, and we have not really discussed that policy recently, but any cancellation that is uh, older than one week before the class, we will honor and we will ask our treasurer, who's very friendly, by the way, and also generous, he will, he will reimburse you for that class. It has been our policy, if the cancellation is less than seven days before the class, that that money uh, is lost. And I have not, again, we have not talked about this policy on our, our board, and I really didn't see any reason to talk about it and change it, because I think it's a, it's a, reasonable, it's a reasonable policy. Thank you. I have a couple uh, more items. Um, uh, one is, it, I think it would be very helpful if on that home page at the bottom, uh, you could create a click on here to see a, 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 a video of that registration process that you took us through. I think that would help a lot of people that, uh, that just don't see this presentation or forget it. Um, or if on the registration page, when you when it's when you all you need to do is put in classes, if it would say that, uh, then I think that would eliminate a lot of problems. My my second one is a question: If I register for a class and I do not and I pay for the class, I don't attend at all. Will I still be sent the video? Yes. No, no, my answer is no. I'm, I'm all wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me just uh, go back to the first one. I think, first of all, this uh, presentation today is being recorded. And I don't know whether the, this recording, my part, is good enough to be posted on our website. We will take a look at it and I can easily do it again. Uh, and then we post it on the website. As far as posting on the website is concerned, in the absence of our previous webmaster, Marty Dorio, we may have a temporary problem but hopefully we will be able to resolve that. And then uh, I think uh, if, you just, if you try to register for a class, but do not pay, then you will not receive any confirmation letter. You will not receive a reminder. You will no, not- no, that, That's not my question. I've already paid. I've registered for a class. I've paid, but then I do not attend. I do not sign in on Zoom. I just yeah. don't do anything while I get the video. And George- yes. you Absolutely right, George. Yes, the answer is yes, you will be receiving it. I misunderstood, I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much, it was excellent. That's the advantage of, um, if you can't make the class the um, and you have paid, the video will be available to you at, you know, at any point as soon as I get it done and edited and so forth, which will be probably within two or three days. And when you, when you edit those, will you be taking out the break time? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now that's uh, something, you know, the, uh, these uh, uh, recordings uh, require a lot of space, file space, and there are, there are limits. And uh, if we uh, exceed those limits, there's extra money to be paid to Zoom. So we try to uh, control the size of our recording files and uh, when we have these classes, I will stop the recording at the beginning of an intermission and resume the recording when the intermission is over. 
Okay, Sue Clark, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Um, yes, the first one I find the answer to, which is um, where the raise hand icon was. Um, I, I have now found it by clicking the participants list. Thanks, Mike and everyone else who helped. Um, this, I do have an additional question, if that's okay. Go ahead. Yes. When does the Eastern time, um, your clocks go forward again um, for the spring? Because it affects obviously me, because if I want to attend classes, I've worked out at the moment, they'll be at three o'clock. Um, but um, if, if yours goes forward, it'll be um, an hour earlier. <laughs> The uh, daylight saving time ends uh, November the 1st. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, when does it start again for you? When does it start again? Yeah. It, does, it, does it, start, it doesn't start again. When, um, in March, um, we don't go to daylight saving until um, our last Sunday in March, something like that. We mm -hmm. don't put our clocks forward until then. But if you um, change yours earlier, it might affect what time I actually have to log on if I'm attending a class in March. It would make your log on an hour earlier. Yes. But, but again, because the videos are recorded, that would be in your benefit because if you sign up for the classes, you will still get the notes and you'll still have access to the video no but oh. when uh, what day i'd like they... to interject i have the answer to her question oh thank you uh, daylight oh, saving oh. time starts again on march 14th oh, at right. 2 a.m oh that's all right because um that's the day before the day after that we um have the last class. oh thank you okay. very much for your help um i i just i just um i just thought i'd ask because sure. of, yeah. So it doesn't look like there's any effect at all. No, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I have one. Is Jim Corsica? Go yes, ahead, Mr. Corsica. All of a sudden, in order to trash something on my Mac laptop, I have to supply a password. Anybody else notice this? Is that for everything or just something in particular? Because for some locations, you actually have to have a password to send something to the trash. It depends on where it is. It's basically on my desktop. If, if, if something is on my desktop and I, and I right click and tell it to move it to the trash, I'll get a box asking me for my uh, password, my laptop password. Could it be that your desktop is linked to iCloud? Uh, yeah, that's very possible. Yeah, that's the case. Yeah. I've had that experience within the last year, I think, um, where I think anything that's in, on my desktop is automatically in my in the cloud, and I have to put the password in in order to uh, trash it. Is there Jim. any way to defeat that? Yes, what's happening is that there are two ways to work with your desktop. One, your desktop and your documents can be actually stored in iCloud.com. And another way where they're actually stored on the desktop and documents folder on your computer. So depending on what you have checked, your information is in either of those two places. So if your information is on iCloud.com, it's possible that you may need to um, authenticate it and and insert that password in order to delete it. Possible. So that's the difference. Um, it's, that's the difference between what's going on now. <clears throat> it's, not, it's not hard to um, notice which one is which. If you open up a finder window and you look on the left-hand side, if it says iCloud and desktop and documents are underneath iCloud, that means that your desktop and documents are connected to iCloud.com. 
All I see on my left-hand side is iCloud Drive. Okay. You and I can do this uh, at an okay. after the meeting. All right. But, yeah, but that's usually, yeah, that's usually what's happening. Uh, you have iCloud.com set up to uh, contain your um, desktop and documents. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's, a, there's a plus. There's a plus to uh, having all your doc, anything in your doc, document folder or your desktop in the cloud. So uh, you got to weigh that risk if, if uh, when you make that decision. Okay, uh, Sue. I believe, yeah, but I believe uh, we have an, uh, we can end the meeting. Uh, I mean, okay. that's reason to explain. Well, extend. we can take. Can we take a few questions, Eckert? Or sure, uh, if there are questions, surely. All right. Well. Can I ask my question? Go ahead, please. Yeah, um, on my iPad and iPhone, when I create a new event in calendar, I notice that the time doesn't scroll anymore. It's in this tiny little box and you have to sort of try and manipulate it without the screen going up and down to try and get the time you want. And it's really awkward. It's just a tiny little square. Um, it, and it is. It is a pain, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> it yes. <laughs> okay. I had to comment on that because I've, I've been griping about that since they did the change. All right, go, go ahead. Yeah, well, I just wondered if there was a sort of neat way of doing it. I mean, I, I was beginning to wonder if I'd done something, changed a setting or something that had landed you know, in this way. That is, the, that is the iOS 14 update. That's the new way of doing things. And we'll, we might get used to it, but sometimes you can't really understand what it's doing. No, so, and it, it, yeah. it skips past the hours and the minutes that you want. Yes, but yes. <laughs> you, you actually have to input all of that. Uh, when you click on that box to input the time, it then gives you another screen down at the bottom and you actually have to input all of that. So if it's 12 o'clock or 12 p.m. that you want to set a time, you actually have to put in 12, uh, 1, 2, 0, 0. If you don't put in 1, 2, 0, 0, it'll think you want 12 minutes. Oh, so, right. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, I'll, look, it's I'll look for that because that, okay. as updates go, that's not one of their best. <laughs> no. All right, Mitch, go ahead and answer, ask your question or comment. Yeah, I wanted to comment on that uh, on the blood oxygen monitor and why it's not FDA approved. It's because it doesn't have to be. It, if you Google that, it's considered a class two <coughs> device and class two medical devices. Uh, it's just for it's just a considered to be a wellness feature. And all these little finger devices that you can buy on Amazon, uh, none of hardly any of those receive FDA approval. That's all I wanted to say about that. All right, anyone else? I have a question for Mitch. Yes, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Uh, Mitch, this is Denny. Uh, I had to get a new uh, uh, modem and uh, I put it in and I, I got everything reset for the computer and iPad and smart TV and, and everything, yeah, the yeah, iPhones. But when I got to the iWatch, uh, uh, I, 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 if I go to the, uh, <clears throat> the apps and, and look at Wi-Fi, it says I'm on Wi-Fi, but I never entered the password for it. Is that all automatic? It, it's all automatic if you've got the passcode in your uh, Apple Watch. Uh, so that would be automatic. And um, since you okay. live right next, since you live right next door, I'll give you a call and come over <laughs> and help you with that. Okay. Well, I get it. Me any questions that are really off color, I'm going to throw a rock at your house. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I, I, I'm good. I, I, I get a green signal. Uh, I just, uh, I use it a lot for maps and that. So uh, I think I'm okay. Okay, good. Thanks. Right, Paul, Paul Sharp, can you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Hello there. I was wondering, in Apple Maps, when you get directions in walking, it assumes a walking pace of over three miles an hour. And I wondered if there was any way of changing that to less, because as we get older, we can't walk that fast. Mitch? <laughs> hey, Mitch. Uh, yes, I'm not that old yet, so I haven't bothered to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are that old, but you walk fast. I walk pretty fast, yeah, and I don't have a, an immediate answer for that. Okay, thank you. That's an interesting question, though. I, I, what I would suggest is that you Google that, and you might find something that uh, will tell you if that can be changed. Yeah, okay. I was using it in conjunction with uh, Find Friends, because I was monitoring other people walking as well. And um, when it says they were, say, five miles apart, it assumed that they'd be with you in, in, in about 40 minutes. But in fact, it took them over an hour to arrive. And, uh, and it would just be nice if you could change that to something that uh, was adaptable to the speed that you, you were able to walk. Yeah, I, uh, again, I'd Google that. And if all else fails, I would call Apple support because they are excellent at uh, usually digging into those issues. Okay, thanks a lot. Cheers. Anyone else? I noticed that the uh, people from England are much more inquisitive than the ones from the United States. And not usually. <laughs> <laughs> are you implying that we are more knowledgeable? No. No, you, no, you just talk more. <laughs> <laughs> Usually. <laughs> Has any, everybody seen this function remote control that replaces the Apple? We can't, we can't see it, Carl. Still can't see it. No, we can see it now. Can Go ahead with your now? question. It, What's your question? It was really nice. I really like it. It costs about $30, and I like it a lot better than the Apple remote called function. Can and you put that information in the chat? I found it online. Uh, I don't have that information right in front of me. Okay. Can you can you check that out and send it to the discussion group? Yes. Thank you, Carl. You look great, Carl. Any other questions? I guess we're all all set. Any other questions? She uh, she. I see no more questions. Right. Can I just right. comment on Carl's uh, remote? Yes, yes, go ahead. OK, basically what it does is the hardest part about the remote is using the, uh, the gestures at the top of the Apple remote. And what this new remote that Carl has does is it replaces that with a, a click wheel um, to make the movements a little more definite. Um, and uh, the remote's thirty bucks. Now, so you have that? Other... You you have that remote? No, I do not have that because I solved my problem in a different way. I, I uh, one of the problems I have with remote is I'm constantly losing it down the side of my sofa. Uh, so what I got was uh, some um, uh, remote covers that are made out of silicon that are real kind of sticky and don't slide and uh, hold on just a second. One of the reasons that I don't ask questions is there's so many other people that have good answers. So I'm lazy and I just listen and yep, they covered that. I don't have to butt in. I know you, Jim. I know better than that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Cheetah. Yeah, we've, had a, we've had many questions from you. <laughs> okay. Since we're on remotes, I wanted I wanted to show my favorite remote, and I can tell you where to buy these. Can Can you see this? Yes. Okay. Can you read it there? Spouse remote. Spouse remote. Yes. T 
See the buttons? The artwork, <laughs> housework. Uh, yeah. yeah. Shop, get beer. Uh, so uh, be quiet. Yeah. So if anybody is interested <laughs> in that remote, uh, they sell for quite a bit of money, but I have a supply of them. Of course. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. There will be a survey that that will be sent out and uh, momentarily, and if you can uh, just fill it out, we really would appreciate it. Uh, there will only, um, for, I think, the only surveys in the future will be on new speakers um, for um, uh, uh, Sheeta and uh, Mitch and the uh, repeat speakers. Uh, I, we we are, you seem to be very happy with the meetings and. Uh, so we won't bother you with the uh, surveys. And so the surveys pr uh, pretty much will come to a halt, except for any new speakers that uh, we have. Thank you very much and have a great day and everybody stay well, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye everyone. Stay well. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.